What are you, some kind of freak? How did you get that strong? Hundred push ups, hundred sit ups, hundred squats. That's what it takes if you're trying to What's going on guys, it's Mac McCarty coming at you again with another tip video, okay? So this last season, I ended up having a really good one. One of my, my best college season, of course, only out of two, but one of my best baseball seasons of all time. I ended up posting a .99 ERA, and I ended up hitting 333, and I think I hit like 12 doubles or something like that. So I ended up bumping my batting average up 60 points from my freshman year, and I lowered my earned run average by two whole runs. And I don't know, I don't think that I got a whole bunch better as in like skill-wise or anything, but I do know that my mentality was so spot on this year. My confidence, everything Yay. that I did at the ballpark was so much better than the year before. Um, so with that being said, I want to tell you guys my three biggest things of having more confidence and having the correct mentality while you're playing your sport or if you're in life or whatever you end up doing. The first thing that I want to tell you guys about is visualization. Visualization for me was huge. Uh, I never really did it before this year. I always thought that, yeah, I believe that I'm going to do well, but I never actually like imagined myself doing well. Like. You may seem, it may seem silly to you, but it actually works. So visualization for me would usually happen the day before the game or right before the game. So one thing that our coach had us do for as hitters before the game, which really helped uh, me personally was ABC. So we'd go out down the left field line. Nobody would say a word. We'd all be in our little zone, going through our swing slowly. And ABC stand for act big, breathe big, commit. So those three things, you'd visualize yourself hitting that double, so you'd slowly go through your swing, and you'd imagine yourself, hey, I'm gonna get that big hit. Hey, it's late in the, it's the eighth, ninth inning. I need to get a big hit for my team. So you'd visualize yourself doing that. Usually at this time, the pitcher would be warming up, so we'd look down, all right, got a lefty today. So off of that lefty, I'm imagining myself crushing the ball into a gap, putting it over that left field fence, staying back on that curveball, going the other way. So that was our really huge visualization thing, and it really actually helped me in pitching too, because I'd just sit down and take like five minutes, wouldn't do a thing, just be sitting on the bench, and just imagine myself doing well. I remember telling Connor this year, hey, I'm gonna throw a no-hitter, and I went through eight innings with a no-hitter, blew it in the ninth, but I imagined myself and I visualized myself doing that, so it ended up helping me out a whole bunch. Anyways, so the second part, the second thing that I want you guys to do, and the second thing that helped me out a bunch this year was developing a routine. So something that I took from another team, and this is uh, this was on the mound, uh, something I took from another team is whenever I would get two ball counts, I would disconnect from the mound, I'd walk around, I'd go, I'd go walk all the way around the mound, go from the back, and then I would like kind of swing my shoulders. If you ever seen like Conor McGregor walk around, I kind of copied that, and I walk back up onto the mound with a whole bunch of confidence, knowing I'm gonna throw a well-located strike this next pitch. And it really did help because my walks went down a bunch this season. My hit by pitches went down a lot. And those are two things, and uh, especially hit by pitches, walks not exactly, but hit by pitches I struggled with because I love to pitch inside. But a little bit of an error, next thing you know, you hit a batter. But with that routine, every single time I knew, all right, two ball count, I still want to go inside. I don't want to give in and throw a really good pitch right down the middle. All right, I'm going to do my routine. I'm going to throw a hard inside strike right now. So, and then at the plate, other things you can do is I always did, I always had um, my two pant legs. Whenever I pull my pant legs, I knew I was in the zone and I'm ready to hit. I tap my bat on the plate, pull my two pant legs and bring it up. And I was locked in, ready to go, ready to beat that pitcher. So, the third thing that I'm gonna share with you guys, the third tip, and this actually, I think, is what really transformed my season. And I heard about it, Tony Robbins was talking about it. He's a motivational speaker for you that don't know. and. Uh, the thing that really helped me was having an artifact and building an alter ego. So as a person, I'm really not that focused of a human being. Like I struggle with focus and my, my brain goes other places. Like it starts to overthink and it thinks at a million miles an hour. And if any of you guys have ever tried to hit a baseball before, it's really hard to do if you're thinking. So what I would do is I, uh, and this sounds silly, but there's an anime show that I watch called One Piece and uh, there's a pirate on there, his name's Zoro, he's this master swordsman, and I would literally trick myself into thinking that I was him. I was this master swordsman going up to the plate every single time. Someone who's so focused, they can cut through anything, so controlled, you know? And I would do that on, on deck, and I would look right at my bat, and I would, say some, I would say some words or whatever to get myself in that zone, and then I'd walk up to the plate super focused. And that was something that really helped me, 
and that's kind of the alter ego that I built. So if you're a person who doesn't exactly have confidence in yourself or it's not easy for you to give a dominating presence, then something you can do is you can build an alter ego who does have that dominating presence. Someone who is super confident. Like you can alter your inner Conor McGregor in a sense. That guy has more confidence than anybody that he's gonna win his fights. So another thing that I did is I used an artifact and you can't exactly have a whole bunch in your pockets uh, to grab for baseball. So what I did is I wrote some phrases in my hat. But as you can see, that says one punch right there. And that phrase was to remind myself that baseball can change in one swing of the bat. It's like a fight. It can all change in one punch you lose focus and you have a runner on first and you guys are up by two runs and you throw one bad pitch belt high, next thing you know they hit a home run, it's over the fence and you're in a tie ball game. And so it was a constant reminder that, hey, I need to be focused every single pitch that I'm on this mound. I can't take it, I can't take a pitch off because who knows, maybe that one punch happens right there and next thing you know we're down by two runs, we're down by three runs, I let up a double or something like that. And as a pitcher it goes the same way. I need to focus on every single pitch. So say I get in that tight situation that base is loaded with one out and I need to throw that one perfect pitch and I really need to focus to throw it and I get that ground ball for a double play. And what you can do is you can use the phrases like that, like one punch, and you can write whatever you want in your hat. I mean, I have I have green beans and tuna also written in, wrote in my hat. And uh, that's just so I don't get too, I don't start overthinking everything on the mound and I just stay loose. Like in the end, baseball is just a game, so writing green beans and tuna in your hats is kind of a way to just calm yourself out, weird yourself or something like that. And that's what I used it as. Whatever you guys end up using this uh, information for, if it's for in your games or anything like this, I suggest really trying it out because as much as we want to say that we have all this confidence in ourselves and everything, if you don't have, if you don't visualize yourself doing well, you're probably not going to know what to do when the time comes. And honestly, if you don't have that routine, it's tough to replicate your success if you don't have a routine. It's tough to come in every single day in your sport or in classes if you don't have that routine of what you're doing. If you're going to bed at 12, at going to bed at midnight one night, and the next night you're going to bed at two, but you're trying to go to bed at 10, you're missing out on all this part of your routine, and next thing you know, you don't even have this routine anymore, and you're just kinda getting blown by the wayside for whatever happens, so. Hopefully this information helps for you guys. Uh, I know it really helped me this season. I know it helped me really transform myself into a much better baseball player. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, so exciting, this last video, that uh, or two videos ago that I posted, my baseball journey. We are just flying up on views. We just hit over 30,000. We just broke 3,000 subscribers too, so I'm so thankful for that, guys. Um, your guys' support means so much. I wouldn't have ever imagined that I was gonna be doing this and having so much fun, just having people Instagram message me and all this stuff. And uh, hey, quick shout out, quick shout out to my boy Joe Gal 27. Um, he Instagram messages me all the time, and he's a really motivated young ball player. So shout out to him. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, comment if you guys have any questions or suggestions. I'll try and get back to you in the comment section. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to your boy, follow me on Instagram right here for all my updates and uh, until I see you guys next time. Peace.